you know, if you have a call for me, <laughs> like a <ransom> girl. <laughs> I will also, I mean, if more than one of you have a call for me, or if one of you have I'll more have than one, one I'll call take for one me, actually. that's cool too. We'll, we'll, we'll sort out Wanga Girl Farms. Wanga Farms. Wanga yeah. Farms. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Tiana. And I'm Ashley. And this is Wanga Gyal, the podcast, your favorite Caribbean food culture podcast. Back again, 2022. We're back another show. We never miss me. Yeah. yeah I'm, I know we've been gone for a while. When was the We the have been finale? gone since, I want to say, July 2021. 2021. Yeah, girl. Oh, yeah. Last year was 2021. I mean, like, so we did another show and we revive. But we're here and that's like, what's like important. Like soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I some bowl and it's like like what am I gonna name again? Oh. Actually, I don't know. I'm not watching okay, bowl and it's I used to watch it. My grandmother was the days of our lives, lives is what used to run in my house. Really? Yeah, in the Interesting. Morning. No, my grandmother did stick by bowl and beauty, but she did love Eric and what a girl named Brooke. Old or Brooke's still alive, you know? Stop. There's yeah, no girl. Way. Missy Pantu to the other day. Anyways, <laughs> that is not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> That's crazy. We yeah. are so sorry. This is our formal apology <laughs> um, for leaving you guys high and dry for so very long. But, you know, we're here to say we're back. And welcome to season three. It's going to be really, really fun. Can't believe it's been three seasons already. Yeah, yeah. What started out as a little idea. Yeah. Here we are again. Year, this is year three because we started in well, 2020. No, no, no. Meaning not full, year, yeah, full yeah, yeah. one year, but we started yeah. 2020. We had our season in 2021 and now yeah. we have our season for 2022. No, yeah, true that, true that, true that. So, yeah, so fun times ahead. And we really are sorry for, for um, <laughs> leaving you guys for so long. I mean, yeah. that wasn't the intention, but life kind of got in the way. Yeah, the um, explanation really <laughs> is that like life and career and yeah, you that's know, just like it. Growing pain, so to speak, yeah, you know. That's really We're growing into adulthood, we're all learning some new things and learning so many stuff about ourselves. Yeah. Um, very important, obviously, for the betterment of the podcast too. We just felt like we should take the time out to, you know, sort out ourselves and then make the podcast a little better with the effort and, yeah. and the time that we have now. So hopefully yeah. We will impress you guys um, with all the things that we've come up with for yeah. this season. I'm actually very excited about the topics for discussion. Yeah, for sure. So with that <laughs> said, um, let's get right into it. So today, right? Today. We're well, going to talk about some very yeah, serious. This episode kind of heavy. I'm not going to lie to you. And I know that like in the past, if you go back and listen to season one and season two, like the season <laughs> openers are usually <laughs> very like light. And are those the ones that we play games? Slightly <laughs> controversial. Um... But since we've been gone for so long, we really kind of just wanted to jump right back into Which it. Which episode would you say is our most uh, controversial one? The today? one where people did uh, come down with throat because we never like curry goat pan fried chicken. <laughs> that was the first episode. I mean, curry, curry, curry gravy, sorry, on fried chicken. I can't believe y'all dragged us on season one, episode one. We were dragged. Dragged. For our personal opinions. But, you know, so... But, you know, I'm not lying to you, no? Three seasons in, I'm not opposed to curry gravy. Like, sometimes... Me, I'm me, I'm not lying, <laughs> Y'all no, changed my life. No, Y'all I dragged me. No, Y'all dragged it, no. me for the better. Okay, like I. I actually, guess bullying does work. Bullying does work in this <laughs> case. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, mama beat a nice lawn as yesterday the fried chicken and wow, curry gravy. Wow, wow, wow. Ten out of ten. Yeah, but yes. Yeah, so we're here today. We're gonna talk about something a bit more serious. Something that definitely I think has been at the forefront of a lot of uh, conversations with people who eat food in Jamaica, right? That's true. Um, and that is the idea of food gentrification. Um, and I know that sounds that might sound like a really big word, but I promise you we'll go break it down nice and easy and digestible. Um, once we'll we get call into on, the the <laughs> on the good old reliable Marion Webster. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at first let's let's just define what gentrification is. And before we define it even, um I know that whenever the word gentrification comes up, it's always in a negative term. 
But and almost in a very American context. That is also true because uh, when you think about it, it's the it kind of goes hand in hand with the quote unquote Americanization of the Western world. And with that said, uh, um, gentrification is defined as the process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, improving housing, and attracting new businesses, often displacing current inhabitants in the process. Another definition simply says that it's a process of making someone or something more refined, polite, or respectable. Right. Now, usually we don't really dwell on the definition of a word, but the fact that both pers perspectives were presented to define this one single term, mm -hmm. and then when you break into it a little more and you want to identify what exactly is respectable, what exactly is refined, and whose idea of those would gentrification be? Yeah, yeah, and I think... I mean, I think before we get into it, on that note, it's like, kind of, I guess, what does it mean to gentrify a food, you know? Mm. And, uh, you know, the whole idea of, it's always about a class relation, right? Even if, even if that class relation has to do with skin color, Mm -hmm. or it doesn't have to do with skin color. It, is, it boils down to class at the end of the day, and the idea of, who is the quote-unquote gentrifier is always going to be the, s the ruling class. Of course. I mean, the basis of the term, or rather, where gentrification originated was where they, what they call it again is a, it's a disinvestment in mm -hmm. poorer communities, and it kind of creates the opportunity for someone richer yeah. come in and make it better. So then yeah. water down the thing, and yeah. then somebody else with some money can come and say, oh, yeah. I made it better, I made it quote-unquote more refined. So immediately you can identify who would be the gentrifier and yeah. who it affects negatively. Yeah. We're not going to call a name or nothing like that, but you get the gist of what we're trying to say. So I think one thing that I wanted to really highlight is that like gentrification is not something that exists in a bubble. It exists all over the world. But, like, gentrification has a special brand <laughs> um, for places that I think were colonized. It looks different in places that were colonized, especially, you know, in places where uh, Western slavery um, okay. was happening. Um, so not to say that gentrification can only happen in the Western world, but there is just... A little spice, um, something mm -hmm. that makes it a little different when you take into consideration the race and class relations that kind of have been left here mm -hmm. um, as remnants of the slave trade. And, you know, I think this is something that we touch on in every topic because it comes back to the history um, of, of what our nation looked like before. Not only our nation, but the, the entire region, yeah. for that matter. We all have the same um, colonial history. We had the same plantation societies. So yeah. While gentrification is a global, um, I wouldn't say issue, but it's a global experience. It's a it's a global the experience um, of it is different in the Caribbean. What you call that word? Phenomenon. Phenomenon. <laughs> Phenomenon. 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 Yeah, that's the version of it that I was looking at. You know, I'm never sure I'm never going to use it. I wasn't sure. Yeah. But yeah, but as Tiana rightfully said, the experience of gentrification is definitely different here, or it's presented in a different context simply because we have a different historical background from yeah. where it would have originated in North American yeah. Um, states. Yeah. So when you, hear the, I, when you hear the word gentrification, like a lot of people, <coughs> a lot of be people view it as, you know, neighborhoods. Um, it's kind of like a, a urban. It's what, well, they urban refer to urbanization a of a, not, not a rural, but a poor city yeah. that, apparently is in desperate need of investment right, right, by right. someone else. But what we're going to talk about today is not just the gentrification of an area, which is where a lot of people use that word mm -hmm. to talk about, but we're going to talk specifically about food. Right? And... Unfor well, I don't want to say unfortunately, because it's not unfortunate. And, and this is something that I guess we're going to talk more about today, like... Is it unfortunate or is it just a result of progress and development, right? Because mm. it's almost, especially when it comes down to food. I, the guys are not talking about nothing else here. Manata bow, <laughs> Manata bow housing scheme. And if you never Manata know, this was bow. the disclaimer. 
yeah. we are we're sticking to this one topic for obvious reasons and it's simply because gentrification is such a wide it's topic wide. and there's not enough for, um, information presented right. to us for us to make, you know, right. judgments or right. any, um, form our own opinions on what's going on. Yeah. So it's we're, we're playing it safe. Yeah. But as it relates to food gentrification, right? It's almost I uh, in my notes here I wrote that it's an unhealthy but almost inevitable cycle. Okay. So I was reading this article. Uh, boy, I cannot remember her name, but she's a professor of urban studies in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is kind of the cycle or the the the, the Pro, the process that happens. You have a particular food that pops up in a minority or an ethnic ethnic community. Um, whether that's, you know, because of migration or whatever. There is a food that pops up. The food becomes popular. And with the advent of social media, there's a possibility of it becoming way more popular than, th than it would have been before. Before. And then the community is now populated by the ruling class. Wow, I think we read the same article. <laughs> yeah, we probably did. The, the community is now populated by the ruling class because, you know, they see this food, they want this food. It's exotic, mm -hmm. and they want to go try it out mm -hmm. for the gram and all of those things. And, you know, um, I think what's important for us to know here before we go further, um, we did explain what the idea of gentrification is. And as Tiana rightfully mentioned, gentrification back then don't look like the same it is yeah. now and the effect yeah. of it is not the same yeah. and it's so funny because we wanted to highlight food or focus on food gentrification when so many articles that we probably would have um come across, co come across in in researching or preparing for this podcast is that food now has taken a spotlight under gentrification itself so Instead of having a byproduct of gentrification being food gentrification, yeah. food is now the indicator or what begins the process of, of gentrification. modern yeah. day gentrification, gentrification in these That's cities. True. That's true. It's mm. a very good indicator. And when you think about it, and of course, we're going to obviously go into what that looks like in Jamaica. <laughs> um, it's something that has always been. Food is kind of that indicator, but it's so easily overlooked because you think especially in an increasingly globalized world, right? You think, okay, I'm just going here to get some street tacos. I'm just, especially in the context of America. You know, you're like, I'm just going to go here buy this little taco truck in this little Mexican community <laughs> suburb, you know, and I'm just going to get some tacos. And then I invite all of my friends over to get some tacos. And then this taco business blows up. And then I'm like, Damn, like, I want to live close to where I can get all of these tacos. Especially when, after the taco blow up, so many other taco trucks move into the community exactly. because of the flourishing. Exactly. And so it's like, it's a very good, I, I, I agree with you on that. It's a very good, like, indicator mm -hmm. of that little, you kind of know what's coming next. In and sense. exactly that. And I think a lot of the articles would have given credit to the fact that, you know, looking at a 21st century gentrification versus... 19th century with food and with globalization and what franchises look like nowadays it's so much easier for these quote-unquote investors yeah. to run into these small communities where the rent cheap the utilities cheap them can't take any land them get because them friend in a high places and them sign the paper and then the overhead costs are little to nothing and then them hire somebody from the community to make it look good and then 15 more pop up and then yeah. the identity of the community is lost yeah yeah you're very right you're very very right and then after the food everything else follows it yep. you have the clothes you have the yep. stores the clubs yep. and and what I mean, happens I guess after that? If we're putting that in the Jamaican context, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like people might, it might not be apparent because honestly, I feel like a lot of people don't pre things that deep in Jamaica, unfortunately. Well, is it that them don't pre things that deep or them don't pre food that deep because food no. is a necessity? No, yeah. Like that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I feel like, I feel like, and I guess that's the whole point of this podcast, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, uh, to, to encourage people to think a little more deeply. But even when you think about, like, the yeah, history... Yeah, man, think about the things we're not putting out of the mouth. Mm. Cut off, yo, cut off the part there. Mm. <laughs> cut it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah, when you think about the history of things, like, is American corporations, American fast food coming into Jamaica, is that gentrification? 
by the definition that I read earlier, of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. Um, you know, things like, and I mean, and this is why I said, is it gentrification or is it just history? No, how I would, or I feel how one would judge whether or not it's gentrification would be the ripple effects. Mm. Now, coming back to when we were defining it in the first place, is gentrification negative? Exactly. So, are we even though it has a negative connotation, but exactly. is, it really? is it really negative? No, we have all of these franchises coming back. We had an entire episode about Starbucks, for yeah. example. Um, season and I, one. <laughs> you know, is epi season one? Episode two. Mythica yeah, season, season one, episode one. Yeah. two. <laughs> it was the, the, the coffee episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a perfect example because Starbucks is one of those modern-day global brands that came to Jamaica and kind of just expanded on a rapid basis. Meaning yeah. We had so many pop-up over a short space of time. But then it popped up in areas that benefited the community as an extension, yeah. right? And we did get into the... We got very granular with it because we were looking at how it affected Cafe Blue. And while mm. we don't have access to the numbers per se, we did note that while Starbucks was here, Cafe Blue still flourished. And Cafe Blue is also still expanding. Maybe not as rapidly as Starbucks, but... the but indicator we used was the fact that they were expanding yeah. and opening new places. Yeah. So based on the definition of gentrification, Starbucks coming here would have been... I guess the healthy competition the, the start of the gentrification process because yes Starbucks came but it didn't pull in many others behind yeah, it yeah yeah but at the same time do we still class it as such because it really and truly never presents anything negative at least not that we know about I mean I guess some people could argue negative things but I mean um, but then would those negative things affect whether or not it's gentrification yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the thing that's the thing mind-boggling so I guess what we really want to talk about today um, and what people would I have been <laughs> getting <laughs> hot and bothered about. I get hot and bothered about it. The price of oxtail. I think <laughs> oxtail is probably <laughs> like the biggest symbol <laughs> of food gentrification. In the Jamaican context in or just in general? I w in the Jamaican context. Okay. I can't speak to any other country because I don't know the economic history of any other country. Definitely not in the American context. Mm. But within the Jamaican context, yeah. Because me really feel hurt. Me hurt. Me hurt. Because I went to a restaurant the other day. I will not name names because I'm not bashing them. And me, I, go, I will go back there because I like them food. But... <laughs> I went there and I paid $2,400 for oxtail. And of course, this is in a big box. Rice and peas. Um, vegetable. Mm -mm. I think them, they give me like two little pieces of plantain and three pieces of oxtail. Three pieces of oxtail, you know? And this is something that you out and pick up and cut. Eat yeah. Yard. I'm a little upset because Lana's have that 18. Three pieces <laughs> of oxtail. And you can get three. It's <laughs> a joke. Interesting. So immediately, after paying for that meal and seeing the value that you got for your money, how did that make you feel? Me did hurt. Me I tell you something hurt because I just, I mean, granted, and of course, this come back to the the whole idea of <laughs> your eye bigger than your belly. Are you? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> with the three piece of oxtail, right, made it full. Like when I was done, I was full. Okay. But I feel like for two thousand four hundred dollar, me should I get at least two meal out of it? Like I should be full two times, not one time. Mm, for an oxtail meal. No, take or out the, for a okay, meal. For, a, for meal? a meal that does not work. I never go sit down. Nobody never serve me. It was just a boop, boop, pick up, in and out. Get a little thing. What's half a 2,400? 700? 12. 1,200. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Wow, your maths <laughs> What happened a while ago? Okay. Half Two a 1,200. That's a lot of money for a one box exactly. food Exactly. One too. box food that it, there is... No way that I could have. My second meal would have just been rice alone. Like there's no, to me, there's no way I could have 
eat it twice. Put that down. Mm. Put down three pieces of oxtail. And it's not like it was three, like, massive pieces of oxtail, mm. neither. Like, you know? Um, so, yeah, me did vex. But, I mean... Me vex. I think it's very interesting how oxtail in particular is treated in Jamaica. Obviously, at the core of it, oxtail is a more expensive meat, mm -hmm. um, simply because of, um, and I really get into the nitty gritty of the butchering, which would cause the meat to be no, the no, way it no. is. No, no, no. So I have a little timeline right here. So all right, make we all right. Make the, the start the timeline with the timeline of oxtail in Jamaica. All right. Well, you right? you start before I say what I want to say. All then. right. So first, actually, we're gonna start out with a little contention. Mm -hmm. contention of history because I realize that the general populace have one idea mm -hmm. and I'm not to say that it's wrong but there seems to be some conflict over what oxtail used to be during the era of slavery okay right so typical Jamaican we all know we learn in school that you know the enslaved Africans would get Scraps. Scraps. Mm -hmm. And, and we de descri define scraps as the piece that the white man never wanted him, fling where give the... Mm. Right. And we all knew at that point in time when we were being told this, whether in prep school, primary school, high school, that, the, that oxtail slave was food. a part mm -hmm. of the scraps. It mm -hmm. was quote-unquote slave food, right? What was the other one again? Selfish. Mm -mm, not so... Like cow tongue and them things there. Selfish was one of them, selfish. apparently. Mm -hmm. Well... But, so, Thomas Thistlewood, mm -hmm. have you ever heard, heard that, that name, name before? Yes. The, the last name, I don't remember the Thomas, but the Thistlewood, yes. He was a British plantation owner here in Jamaica, of right? Of course. And in 1778, them time, the sugar run road. Hey. <laughs> run road. <laughs> sugar like money out there. Money, <laughs> right? Um, in his report from his, not his report, him like a diary entry. Him like a journal. Him like a journal from Christmas. So, this is Christmas 1778. Uh, he gave the enslaved the head, liver, lights, and guts for Christmas supper. But he kept the flesh, the tongue, and the tail for himself. Interesting. Um, and so this then sparks the conversation of, was the tail ever slave food? Because mm. in, in the reading that I've been, in some of the readings that I've been doing, right, there seems, and, and this I said, this is a little contention, a little discrepancy, because mm -hmm. Thomas, Mr. Thomas had that in his thing in 1778, right? And even, even to this day, and as you said before, the tail, when it comes down to butchering, mm -hmm. is more expensive. Why? Because a cow only have one mm -hmm. tail. Yeah, remember it, guys, demand and supply. It have four foot. It have, I think, um, just, you know... One cow can feed a good amount of people, but not the tail. Yeah, the tail is just one. A cow only has one tail yeah. and one tongue. So, yeah, right? So, But then now it makes a lot of sense based on what the journal says then. Right. It leads me to wonder if we've convinced ourselves all along... <laughs> and you know what the Jamaican people feel... <laughs> <think? laughs> things and run with it yeah but here's but here is where the, dis the, the, the discrepancy in. comes in right by 19 mind you in 1778 when miss officer was making a journal entry mm -hmm, all right with ink and feather the current population of jamaica the demographics was our black population was anywhere between 70 to 90 percent black right mm -hmm. by 1914 slavery done mm -hmm. right world war i keep world war i keep <laughs> By this point in time, 98% of the Jamaican population was black. Okay. Right? But in the streets, oxtail was not considered a high-end cut of meat. So it, beg it leads me to wonder, and I could not find the answer to How the question. Did we get here? What happened between 1778 and 1914? I don't know, and I could not find the answer. Hmm. I could not find the answer. The more you think about it, you know, in, in the economic sense of it, it makes sense as to why the tail is more expensive. Yeah. However, as it relates to the cut of the meat, it's, it's a little less refined. Because mm -hmm. on a typical animal outside of the cow, 
We don't eat tails. Mm-hmm. Right? And even when you think about beef, you cannot do oxtail not well done. That is true. It has to be cooked right through. It has to be because Pressure of the bone. So exactly. It has to be well done. Whereas with other cuts of meat, you can you, you have Rock. you can have a rare a rare um you know slab of steak. Whereas you know so I don't it's, know. It's it's something that definitely is mind boggling, especially to somebody who has a, a strong economic background and somebody who studied Caribbean history yeah. um, at an exam level. Because it is one of those things that when you read essay, you know exactly what the enslaved ate. Yeah. Right? And oxtail was, it's general. It, everybody knows, say, this is what the people them eat and right. this is what the, the white right. man would give them. But then there's a discrepancy as to when it went from being slave food to it being a luxury good. Then again, m- I'm also wondering if Mr. Thistle would really just like the tail. Mm, if, he, I'm just if, if he was. Sorry. Man alive from them bones. That's a true. That's a true. <laughs> but maybe he was one in a million. No, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you if uh, the context of what he's writing should be taken into consideration mm-hmm. to say, is it that him don't normally give them these things during um, on a regular basis? And because it's a holiday, and decides to, I'm going to keep the scraps for myself, and I'm going to give them whatever else. No, no, because he gave them all the other scraps, the head, the liver, and the guts. But then, why did he feel the need to write these things down and say, "Oh, I kept the tongue and the tail"? Me no know. Me couldn't tell you. They did have shortage down there. Mister Thistle would eat the tongue and the tail. Me couldn't tail. tell you. But I, but from from my understanding, Mister Thistle liked the tongue and the tail. Okay. Cause it, there were there was more than one account in his journal that Talking mentioned about tongues and tails. his his keeping oh. the tongue and the tail. Yeah, so maybe him did just like it. it. Maybe mm. him did just like it. Maybe him did just like it. But tell her that to it's, say. It still it still begs the question: How did we get from what our idea of quote unquote yeah. enslaved food is to where oxtail prices yeah. now? Yeah. Because yeah. the typical Jamaican cannot afford an oxtail meal either. You buy it from the cook shop or if you buy it for go cook it. Yep. So, so yeah. So, well, I guess we, we can continue on the timeline. Mm-hmm. So, as I said, 1914, it's not considered a high-end high end cut piece of meat. Um, public slaughterhouses were established by 1914 here mm-hmm. in Jamaica. And in those slaughterhouses, they would remove the head, the feet, the hide, the tail, and the viscera, viscera being the guts, mm-hmm. um, before they would hang it for display in the butcher shop. So, they were like low-key not even really available for sale because they were so it's like when you clean up the animal you know and you present the meat that is actually they were seen as disgust Mm -hmm. right so by the 1930s market life began to pick up um and rationing different prices of meat kind of became more the norm because once upon a time before the 1930s it was kind of like you have a price for beef Mm -hmm. But by the 1930s, they started doing like different pricing for this is the price for and the that belly. That is how we fell this in a depression pri- in yeah. 1939. Yeah, yeah. And then this is where they actually said. A joke, that's not true, by the way. But you can see that these things indicating yeah. that we're going to lead into Bombo Combo eventually. Exactly, exactly. Like, how did you not see this coming <laughs> all of a sudden? It was inevitable. <laughs> sure, man. But yeah, so by the 1930s is when the tongue and the tail become expensive. Uh, because in comparison to the overall weight of the cow, and this was by legislation, by the way, this was a this this it's systemic this is serious, <laughs> right? So they must say each cow only have one tongue and one tail. Oh, they put the economics in there, yeah. and they never realized that the econ man would they advise them was a reason why we end up in a great depression. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love how stupid <laughs> you guys are. <laughs> hey, you know the generations been job. <laughs> But yeah, so <laughs> the demand increases, um, but there is a tightness around the natural supply, mm-hmm. right? Which is why the price now goes up. So in 1930, we decide we, we decide to start caring about the economics of the cow, really and truly. By, the, <laughs> by the 1960s, mm-hmm. so this is 30 years later, in Santa Cruz market, items like li- liver, kidney, trotters, tripe, cow foot and oxtail were reserved as a special treat for regular buyers or for those whose bills surpassed a certain amount. So by the 1960s, so I'm gonna try say, it was so... Can afford a certain amount of things and I can afford this. It too. was so exclusive 
that you could not get it. Imagine waitlist for oxtail in the 1950s. Wait for Imagine if I go market, go spend a certain amount before them can say, you know, like when Mega Mart did them Christmas promotion, you spend over five grand, you can win a raffle yeah. for a raffle. Like yeah. a raffle, like a grab bag for oxtail. Grab. <laughs> After this talk, truth. Me no know, me no know, me no know at this point. Um, <laughs> <coughs> come in like me, I forgot to stop eating oxtail. <laughs> no, but my, I can't tell the last eat <laughs> So yeah, so that was the 1960s, right? Santa mm-hmm. Cruz market did I go on with things. By 1980s, 20 years later, beef prices by weight were now officially the highest for oxtail, and the price for the oxtail in the 1980s in Jamaica was comparable to a uh, by weight was comparable to the price of sirloin and T-bone steak. And I said the foolishness when I go on with it. Right? And the year the dates that we are talking about, me and Tiana wasn't even a concept. Our parents were in concept. Even. And we are here suffering. Not even. Right? But it's, it's important to mention, though, and I think it's funny, cow foot was equally as expensive back then. Cow foot, by weight, was, I think, probably the about the sixth or the seventh most expensive cut of beef. I'm not surprised by that. Right? I'm not but surprised wait. By, that. by the 1990s, mm-hmm. cow foot started to be imported. And that is why the price of cow foot it's dropped. Down. But the same was not, ex- this, that was not the same experience for oxtail. People have a lot to talk about. Well, there's a lot here to unpack. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to unpack. Because how? How? Who, what, when, Globali- where, why, and how? Globalization. That's what happened because you saw the effect it had on cow foot versus oxtail. It's stressful. It's stressful to think I about. I never know that episode that got pissed me off It's so stressful much. to think about the fact that it really, economics really just changed the whole landscape of this one piece of meat. That tastes so good. It's just tender. It tastes so it good. Melts in your mouth. And it's crazy to think that there is still, it's, it's crazy to me to think that we live here in Jamaica. And oxtail, if you think about it, is a delicacy here. Mm. Because many other cu- cultures in the world don't eat oxtail. Okay. Right? Especially like if you look in America, the the average American does not eat oxtail. It's the Jamaicans in America that it's buy very oxtail. it's the Jamaicans and the Africans mm. in America. Yes, that is true. Because I know a lot of African cultures do. I mean, really our food cultures resemble right, each other, so right. I, I can understand how they cross paths. Right, Ross, Ashley, Nesbitt. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. No, Ashley, think about it. Think about it. I did. Who used to who used to cook for the white people? Them the Africans. That's why Miss Atisa would not like the tail. Yeah. Because she cook it nice. Mama said, I have a pressure cooker back then, you know, my girl I cook it from yesterday. From me yesterday, from yesterday you know? she cook it. Why, it melts in her mouth Christmas morning, though. From me yesterday, the old slave, I cook it and I because give it to me. Because when you don't have a pressure cooker, and you, and you put the oxtail upon the stove, you're going to left it there for at least six hours. So make it tender down and cook right through. So if she there cook it upon cook, well, then I get the cold stove, probably get her some good fire. So it's probably done in a five hours. Janum. Watch me over here, think about the man Mila cook. Jano. Them six ja, summer. No. Yeah. Wow. That's what conversation does. Yeah. And people always say, oh, you chat so much. This is what it causes. Yeah. And that's, this what we're that's, yeah. What, that's what we're here for. That's what yeah. we're here for. But yeah, it's a lot to think about. I um, think what, what kind of, I'm trying to remember what sparked or um, interest in this, in this topic. I think there was an insider video where they were um, exploring you know when them do those videos when them go out and taste different foods and oxtail was the um the choice for that episode mm-hmm. and they were kind of going around to different uh, restaurants in a specific state and eating the oxtail and they were trying to shine some light on the history of it but i can't remember how accurate it was mm-hmm. or in what context that they wanted to present it as but i do remember the comments being made about uh, how expensive it was uh, when you compare it to another food that is very similar in what you'd get. So yeah. you get your rice, your vegetable, like a steamer, a piece of plantain, and you get oxtail versus 
if you go buy curry goat instead and they wanted to highlight mm -hmm. the stark difference in the prices for both yeah what 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 i wonder right is because as jamaica has developed as a nation mm -hmm. food the food landscape has changed a lot right nobody can deny that things things Agreed. have changed even just within <laughs> our like a quarter century Listen. here but look how much things have changed in the past five years exactly right and so it makes me wonder right given that oxtail is becoming so expensive and the price is clearly not going down <laughs> you've experienced deflation in your life <laughs> You're can you are 27 can years old. <laughs> can you foresee a time when oxtail will just no longer be desired? Oxtail will always be desired. There's no doubt no, about that. However, it, no, the demand will not be there simply because people can't afford it. No, but it. what I'm saying is when I said not desired, can you imagine growing up? Hundred, never hundred years from now, I'm not experiencing oxtail it because it was so far removed from your so timeline. Yeah, you know that. You know, like mm -hmm. how people feel about like escargot, mm. where it's so it's a delicacy, mm -hmm. but people, the average person, cannot understand it. it. They can't afford and it. The they same, don't understand it. It's so exactly different. like foie gras. Same mm -hmm. thing. It's a delicacy, but a lot of people don't understand it because it one, it's so expensive, and two, it's so removed that it. It so almost has a place of disgust well, for the average person. Well, Tiana, you did mention earlier about what a delicacy oxtail is. Yeah. So if we are classing it as a delicacy, it's very easy to compare it to all the other things yeah. you mentioned a while ago. Yeah. And eventually it will just be it so far removed from the average yeah. individual where it becomes a thing that we're just not exposed to it anymore. Yeah. And I was, as I was, th that thought came to mind because yesterday as I was doing, you know, the research for this episode, mm -hmm. I came across some, what were considered Jamaican delicacies okay. in the 1800s, right? Can you call it Jamaican? Well, no, mm. it was, yes, because visitors to Jamaica, that's what they came here in for. In the 1800s? Yes. Okay. Um, specifically in 1847, um, this guy, an English British naturalist uh, by the name of Philip Henry Goss, he came to the island and he reported uh, that Jamaica, the three Jamaican delicacies, the top Jamaican delicacies in 1847 were ringtail, which is pigeon, mm -hmm. bird bush. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I not lie. A true, a true, a true. But think about it. The average Jamaican don't eat bird. No. It's a very uptown thing. It is. Same thing that I was saying about, mm -hmm. you know. So the Jamaican delicacies were ringtail, freshwater mullet, which is a fish, fish. Mm -hmm. and black land crab. Black land crab. That's interesting. The crab them went went in at the gully yeah. and then I sell yeah. 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 And those were land the delicacies. Crab. And let me tell you how how there were so much of a delicacy. In 1891, there was a commemorative handkerchief that was made, and in each corner of the handkerchief was it was embroidered there. That the was pigeon, the, guys, that was the OG coat of arms, if you never know. The pigeon <laughs> was in one corner, the mullet was in another corner, the lab the crab was in another corner, and there was a turtle in another in the other corner. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> among among the other things that are, that were delicacies then was manatee, mm. iguana. Um, banana fig, cocoa plum, those are things that we don't even eat anymore. Then I was about to say, look at the direction that each of those um, individual foods took. Which you have the, um, the fish. That is not something that the average individual goes out and requests. Fresh water, fresh to be water honest. Fish. Because you know so Jamaicans love them snapper and them love them parrot. And those are all salt water fishes. Salt Mind water you, fish. stop them parrot fish. We talk about that all the time. Just a reminder, stop it. Please. Stop it. We're not, we're not for no better by now. Stop it. We should not be here three seasons later. I talk about the parrot fish. Stop and I still go down at Elsha. I want no man offer the parrot fish and I say yes. I want to say that. I want to sleep at night. Come on. 
Come on. Shameful. Anyway, but so freshwater fish. fish. <laughs> me can't tell you something. Me not like freshwater fish. Something <laughs> tastes different about <laughs> freshwater fish. It's a lack of salt in my something. It's it no. Uh, it, <laughs> not it, a season. It fresh. It fresh. <laughs> the fresh water make you fresh. I mean, I like that. I mean, I like that. I don't like it. All the other things. So the but then so that is something that we don't hear of. And then you have the crab. Mm-hmm. Tell me where you see crab like that in Jamaica. Euro Circle. Okay, where else? In Adigoli. Exactly. <laughs> so then you realize that it was once a delicacy, and now it's just something that any average man can go down an old harbor bush, go catch it four o'clock in the morning, carry it up, put it in another pot, and you know, sell it on Hero Circle. But then on the, the f- one another versus the fish that is not existing anymore. So then, but and then when you look at and then when going. you look at the the pigeon. Pigeon is not That's a, a very uptown food. Course, regular Jamaicans don't eat bird like that. The only bird we eat is chicken. When I, like, obviously I'm, and I don't know if, I honestly have no idea if this is in relation to my Chinese culture, but the Chinese side of my family love bird. Bird. Mm. I don't know if it's because they're Chinese or it's, if it's because Chinese people tend to be uptown. I don't know. Mm. But them love a bird. Every now and again, my father will randomly come home with bird. And sometimes I think to myself, this is a very strange occurrence. I don't know any other, I d- none of my friends, I've never been over any of my other friends' house and have been offered bird. And mm. I know my friends have been offered bird when they come over to my house. Because oh, maybe because they never come over to me whenever it's, it's like bird season because they them come home with bird every Sunday. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Ashley. It's not mm. even it's only in bird mm-hmm. season that we have bird. That's like weird. <laughs> That's weird. Bird season mm. don't know, though. Yeah, we're not in bird season. Bird season is... Bird was at my house last weekend. I remember your father kind of Okay, so okay. That too. okay. But, I mean, but you are correct. All of those foods have taken a different direction. Mm-hmm. But then uh, the one thing with oxtail is at this point in time, you can see where it's heading because mm-hmm. it's not dwindling down like the crab. Mm-mm. The price Mm-mm. is either just always high or mm-hmm. constantly rising. Mm-hmm. And it makes me wonder, I won't add it to the cow them. I wa- Why cow scares all of a sudden? It's actually because of global warming. And we can't bother get into it. It's actually because Mo of global warming. We want to leave the cow them alone. Yeah, a global warming. Make them moo and go about them business. Mm. Just, and you know, it's not even like we have to leave them alone forever. Just, it's the same thing with the parrot fish. We don't have to leave them alone forever. We just have to make them replenish a little bit. Just, just give them a little break. Just give them a break. Just make them calm down. Make them, you know. But you know what the problem is? Nobody cares enough to go to a restaurant and when them order the fish, them say, is this parrot fish? And when the waitress say yes, them still say okay. That's that, true. That's what the problem is. That's true. Right? No, we're in a society where, I wouldn't even say in a society, but we're living in a time where the price of everything, just sky high. And we all know the reasons for that. Right? We're coming out of a global pandemic. Um, aggregate demand has been low for two years and scarcity is running rampant and then Pute decides they're going to put on him foot three days ago. That means uh, the crude oil price per barrel is like $105 now. So hey, hey, have, hey, hey, hey. We have not felt the real effects no. of things that Hold are on. happening, you know. Separate and apart from the food situation, right? We're going to fill up on the tank ASAP, actually. Bro, when because that Thursday rise hit, it's not a joke. I forgot to tell my boss that I work from home coming on a car. It's not a joke. I mean, I forgot. I might as well buy the bicycle now because I've been thinking about it for a while. I'm going to lose some weight. <laughs> so, I just like, I don't, it's very, you know. So, when we see all of those things happening, but then the fact is, yes, everything is rising, but oxtail is just. Why? Especially because the direct impact on oxtail is not visible. Yeah. I'm not seeing why i don't know i guess there's a lot more to it um i found out yesterday that a lot of farmers or butchers are coming out of the pig business and it's because the price to feed them is so high now it makes no sense in comparison to cows yes because all right when you look at it let me just give you some little farmer knowledge Pigs are high maintenance compared to goats and cows, simply because when the pig hungry, him can't go to the to eat grass. Oh. So you have to feed them. So whereas you have a plot of land, you ever see the cow up a moon, and somebody else leave him up there for clear up the space, and it, it kills two birds with one stone, him eat, and the government now have to pay for put the lawn more upon it, right? So 
that works with cows and that works with goats. As a matter of fact, you're going to the market and the goats eat the plastic. Him not dead. Yeah. But the pig now, they're very delicate mm-hmm. animals and to preserve the integrity of the pig itself, if it is that you're going to quit, you know, the purpose of growing is for eating, you have to make sure that them get proper grains. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. the maintenance for pigs at this point in time is extremely high. high. So people have been coming out of, out of the business. Well, it's so dramatic that they actually just stop butchering pigs altogether because wow. they can't afford to raise them. And I mean, chicken prices are higher now because of it. Right I now. was told that it costs on average about 80,000 Jamaican dollars per week to feed, no, per month to feed 850 chickens. Right when you're now. supposed to calculate that cost plus other overheads to take care of them chicken. And because chicken delicate too, you know, you have to have cob with mm. electric feed off, water, mm. they're almost a light, the right amount of heat. And then you put all of that together, the price that it's selling at really and truly don't reflect a high profit margin for you to stick it out. So And honestly, Ashley, that's how I feel when people complain about the prices of things. I find that as consumers, a lot of us mindlessly complain. Like it's like you not e- you don't even realize that the price of chicken going up. The price of chicken is going up. Why is the price of chicken going up? Price of chicken not just going up because somebody decided to push up the no, price of chicken. No, it's because you know. input costs are going up. Exactly, so everything is affected. Input it. costs are going mm. up. If the restaurant have to pay for more for the chicken, they have to they're pay more gonna for the have food. to. You're gonna have to pay more for the food. I'm sorry, and like it's unfortunate, and I understand that like times are getting really hard, and food is getting way more expensive. Mm-hmm. But do not. T- on it, do not take it out on the restaurants. I'm yeah, sorry. But you do know, not take it out I'm on your restaurants and the restaurant I'm not going to say that they're 100% not responsible because a lot of people use this as an opportunity to inflate prices, you mm-hmm. know, meaning general price rise is inflation, but you tack on a little bit of something because you can't get away with it at this point. However, on average, a restaurant right now, even with increased prices, they still are maintaining or getting a lower profit margin than before. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And the price is higher still, you know. Yeah. But what we're experiencing now is what they call cost push inflation. So your input costs gone up. Obviously, your final product could go up as well. Yeah, yeah. But the oxtail she, we still need an explanation. We need something more for justify the reason why your cost that more. Because I remember when oxtail was $800 a pound, and I remember when it hit $1,000 a pound, and then it became a thing that it was constantly spoken about. The fact that we did always know, I mean, we're only 27 years old, so oxtail, by the time it was a luxury good, we would have already been born and experiencing it as a more expensive meat. But then it amplified. But even when you think about it, Ashley, the other day I saw somebody... Them goes obviously this is supermarket so you mm. know supermarket is gonna mm, be more different. expensive mm-hmm. than a butcher but whatever them go supermarket must have five piece of oxtail for about five grand not including tax but I paid two thousand four hundred dollar for three piece of oxtail that they done cook which is why I said the the with inflation now it's v- sorry it's very hard to ascertain. How are these prices, or it's very hard to justify the price when you don't have all of the information. This is how market failure happens, you know, asymmetric information. You as a consumer don't know all that you need to know, but you're making this purchase or not making the purchase because of the lack of information or because somebody else knows more than you. Now, me as an individual, let's say I suppose we put into context what Tiana does say a while ago. Put some numbers on it. Five grand for five. Let's, let's just call it five grand for five piece of oxtail. That's grand a piece. That's grand a piece, right? Immediately in a Tiana box, if it is that she had a three piece of oxtail in there, that means uh, that's three grand for your meal already. And that don't include the seasoning. Exactly. We don't reach anywhere else. The, the rice. Season. And there's rice and vegetables. The vegetable. The box. The stove where the you box, cook it. The light where the stove need. The person who cook it and the person who the person cash who, me. The person who killed the cow. The person who transport the me the person who clean it the person who yeah. clean up after me yeah right yeah it doesn't it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot and it's not translating it's right a lot. anyway me want somebody for blame for this because somebody i forgot answer for the crimes anyway me want somebody <laughs> for 
gift me a call. Adapt me one. Just gift me one. Well, if you're interested, um, there's a sale next month. But you know, you're not hear me say gift. And it's 60000 for a calf. My father told me if I ready up myself. I used to them call me. I want to know which call business me, you know. You're not hear me say gift. What should I tell me about 60000 60, And he must say, I think it would be good for you my to buy. My birthday, I come I up. I think it would be good for you to buy two. My birthday, I come up. Ooh. Somebody can buy me a call and gift it to me. I can give you a charge. goat. I think if you want a goat, I can more. Me can Actually, I can't bother with you and this goat. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, from when you have goat for but, me. But it's probably down there kill and dead and get a new one and you don't even know. When was the last time you got asked for the goat? Yeah, exactly. That was probably like 2014. <laughs> 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 the goat literally born, grow, kill, <laughs> eat and born. <laughs> sure. But on a, on a real though, I know that cow expensive and I know that it's a whole heap of work to take care of cow. Yeah. And the killing of the cows, it's the butchering of cows is very hard. Yeah. The cleaning of cows, it's so different from any other animal. If you've seen it, you know. And the cow, them stupid. It, they, them just hard for deal with like on a daily basis. They, they be jumping over fence, jumping in between cars. Anyway, but what cow I'm really trying to... jump over the moon. <laughs> the cow, I had a cow that jumped over the gate and lost its life. Anyways... So, um, you know, we're just comparing like, the different meat kinds and seeing how, you know, um, the input costs force these things to go up. And, you know, when I go in the supermarket, it's like you can see the gradual increase in the chicken over the different months. Mm -hmm. But then it's like one day I feel it's $2,000 and one day it's five. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. But, I mean, I mean, I guess say all of that to say, you know, as we, as we start to look at the progression of food, wh whatever it is, whether it's oxtail or chicken or pasta or whatever, right? Um, tacos, I don't know, whatever. Really think about one, is this happening because somebody is trying to take advantage of it? Like is this increase and in exclusivity happening because someone is genuinely trying to take advantage? Or is it happening because demand and supply and all the other factors of the economy. You get me? Like there there a lot of people will complain and say, Oh, it's because white people are eat oxtail now why why it gets so expensive, but really and truly we share that culture with people. Tourism is our biggest industry. So, duh, them go come and them go eat our food and they're going to want more. Mm. And given all of the bumbo combo that are going on in the world mm. right now, I mean, people's, uh, people's price of production anger, is going to yeah, go up. And people's anger is, I think, somewhat rightly placed simply because we can even, based on what you said, it comes back to gentrification in that one is gentrification good or bad based on the context i know we can con maybe answer that it based on the context that you put it in because based on the context whereas gentrification really does bring some form of refinement to certain communities that need it the basis of it was intentional meaning you bring these con this community down just so you can build it back for somebody else's gain yeah so whereas if that happened when my grandmother was living in her community me as a third generation would probably benefit from it however how do i benefit from oxtail raising to a point where you're going to justify and say it's because of white and eating it now so because a white man versus a black mouth is eating it now it's more expensive and i don't think nah, that's right i don't think i don't think that's that right in our is case simply not enough. and then that is how we can say then that gentrification has fucked us up mm? has screwed us <laughs> excuse me i forgot i got away i got a little passionate Boy. mommy you know me stereotype sorry <laughs> but yeah no yeah it it's messed up but is also reality it and is reality. it's just as i said it's an unhealthy cycle but it's almost an inevitable one when you look at it especially as things like globalization you know i think well, the worst part of all of these events or all of these changes that we've experienced in the global and political um spheres is the fact that there's no limitation on it so whereas we'll have so many benefits from globalization. Globalization has probably been one of the best things to happen to us. Yeah. It was probably one of the worst things to happen to us yeah. as well. Pros and cons. There's always a price to and pay. I, you know? Yeah, and I think what the limitation is, or what the limitation is not, is people's greed. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's very you true. You want to make a profit of $3,000 off of me when your operational cost for produce that one unit for me is 1100 Then... 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's it's really messed up. It's really we can miss that still, man. Wickedness. Wicked, wicked, wicked bad. Well, yeah, anyways. Yeah, while well, we're not saying that uh, the, in, the increase in price is not uh, done rightfully, so, you know, it's just to identify how we got from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would have been the factors influencing us to make oxtail so expensive. Because when you strip it down to the core of it, there has to be something else. There has to be something else. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think Ashley nor I have the information and if you do feel that. free to share it with us yeah if you do let's let's you know you know the usual you know we love to interact you know the usual keep the conversation going we also have a new instagram account yes the wonga pod at wonga pod so follow that one to keep the conversation going um you know tell us what you think about oxtail do you think the price is right or do you think it's, you know, and you know there's expensive? A, there's a concept in economics where they tie demand to um, what I refer to as utility. And utility is just a satisfaction. So people's willingness to buy is based on how much satisfaction them get out of it. And obviously, it don't apply to everything because, you know, man will pay two dollar for certain things where mm. they get so much satisfaction out of mm. versus somebody who is willing to pay a hundred and fifty dollars for a pair of sneakers that make them so happy. Yeah, yeah. So then is oxtail that good where people will keep demanding That's because true. they get so much satisfaction? That's or true. will the price outweigh the satisfaction? That's because true. now, if me get up right now and me go pay for your oxtail for $2,400 and God forbid it tastes bad, there is no happiness in this household. I'm going to run a poll. I'm going to run <laughs> a poll. There is no, there's no peace. Would you pay $5,000 for a box, for an oxtail box lunch? I'm going to run a poll and see Just what Just because happens. it tastes good. And if it is that you would, what would the ideal plate look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're paying $5,000 for an oxtail box lunch. Tell me what you want in the box. And if it is to your liking, if you're willing to pay $5,000. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap on season three, episode one. We're as, back. Well, as usual, <laughs> as usual, you know, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Wanga Gal is now on TikTok. TikTok. So yeah, and follow Wanga Pod, which is where all of the podcast updates will be. Um, let me have bongs, bongs, and mics, so Jesus. Um, where they'll all be. <laughs> That's where all of the updates for directly for the podcast will be coming up. Um, as usual, watch your own a plate. Watch your own a plate. Eat what you want. <laughs> eat what you grow, grow what you eat. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try Don't it. Don't knock it till and you try it. And for the love of God, sir, bro, God, put in upon 12 o'clock curfew. Act like you're have some sense. Yeah, yeah. Behave. I mean, come in here with some sense. I mean, this might come out. I don't know what's going to happen when this comes out. I don't know either because the, the behavior. I must up on the road since the 12 o'clock yeah. curfew come in last night. Yeah. You know, wilding yeah. out out there. I mean, have fun, you know. Yeah. I I agree that everybody need that balance in them life. But keep in mind that we're still here. Yeah. We're still here. We so, have, what, less than 25% of the population vaccinated. Yeah. So that's something to keep in so mind. So I've got to say, continue to be safe. Remember, my birth month is March. So oh, if you have a call to give me, uh, send it my way. Hit me up. You can hit Question me in the DMs. Where are you go keep the call? It no matter. We'll find. I, I thought you were going to say at my house because I was like. <laughs> the, the, whole, the, the call can keep at Ashley House. I am willing to pay rent. So, you know, if you have. A call for me. <laughs> like a grant. I will also, I mean, if more than one of you have a call for me, or if one of you have I'll more have than one, one call for one, me, actually. that's cool too. We'll, we'll, we'll sort out Wonga Girl Farms. Wonga Farms. Wonga yeah. Farms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonga, Wonga farms. Meats. Wonga, Wonga Meats will be the butcher shop. Wonga yeah, Farms yeah, yeah, will be yeah. where you guys can come on a Sunday with your boo. We'll probably have some cotton candy. Yeah, a little attraction. What them call it? We're not no about farm to we table. No, we're you know about business plan, business Farm model. to table experience. Oh, we got a brunch upon the farm. <laughs> Wonka brunch. Wonka brunch. brunch. <laughs> you see, this is what could be if someone just gives us a call. So, yeah. Start start the dream. Yes. Start the dream. Yes. Make us start. One call can make a life. <laughs> <laughs> we need a tagline or something. <laughs> One cow can, can make a, make a difference. One cow can make a dream. One cow can make a dream come true. The Wonga dream. With Wonga Farms. Anyways, thanks for joining us today, guys. And until next time, stay safe. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye.